Hello everyone, welcome back again into today's lesson video. Um, please don't forget to subscribe, right? Please just, just click that red subscribe button for more lesson content, right? Okay, as we did um, our last lesson video for life sciences, I promise that I'm going to be touching also on the video. Uh, I'm going to make a video that is going to be on negative feedback of FSH as well as the progesterone, right? Yes. So we're going to be looking at that today, right? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So this video, this lesson, negative feedback of FSH, is going to be with this. Okay. Yes. This lesson. Okay. This lesson under um, the fertilization, um, the formation of zygote until it becomes blastocyst and its implantation, right? Mm -hmm. So let's start with the negative feedback of FSH, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so as I explained to you that negative feedback, this is one, or this will by the secretion of the other hormone, or this will by we have the high levels of the other hormone inhibits the secretion of the other hormone on the other side okay yes for instance as we're going to be speaking about or if ever you understand or you fully understand the the, the, the context of um endocrine system on how the, the the glands as well as the hormones mostly work together okay yes for human response and 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 you are going to easily understand the, the negative feedback of progesterone as well as the FSH, but it's quite easy, guys. Very, very easy. Um, yeah. So, as we speak, as we speak about the negative feedback between progesterone and FSH, a follow stimulating hormone. This basically means that just before I explain, a secretion of progesterone, okay, inhibits a secretion of the FSH. Okay, that's the vital concept that you have to understand, right? as well as the secretion of the FSH inhibits the secretion of progesterone, meaning that in a female body, when there is high levels of the FSH, there will be low, very, very low levels of progesterone in her blood, or there will be no levels of progesterone at all. So it's a vice versa. I hope you get it, guys, right? Yes. So if you get that, just before I explain everything, you will master the, 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 the objective of the... Of the, of the Connect today or of the video today. Okay, so look, okay, so we having the need the negative feedback of progesterone as, as well as the um, FSH. So we have increased levels of progesterone right there, right? Yes, if ever we have increased levels of progesterone, that is going to inhibit the pituitary gland which secretes the FSH, right? Meaning that in this case, or I can say, however, if ever we have, if ever I, I, I started with decreased levels of progesterone, this is whereby the pituitary gland is going to secrete more LSH. Okay? Yes. So, but now, I just started with uh, increased levels of progesterone, right? Yes. Because I find it more um, relatively easier. Okay? Yes. To understand. So, look. If you have increased levels of progesterone in the female body, meaning that in this case, in the female reproductive organ or system, this will buy, there is a presence of the corpus luteum. Okay? And also, this space column is that, or this creates in your mind that this female is pregnant. Okay? Yes. So, meaning, the corpus luteum is constantly producing or secreting the, the progesterone to maintain the endometrium wall, right? Yes. So, in the side of the FSH, meaning that the pituitary gland is being inhibited, right? Not to secrete the, the, the follicle. That's why when the females, okay, are pregnant, there will be no estrogen, right? Yes, because 
if the FSH is being secreted, the follicle will develop, meaning that the osteogen will also kick in, meaning that everything is abnormal now. Okay? Yes. But in this way, this is about the pituitary gland secreting less FSH because there is more progesterone, right? Yes. So if there is less um, FSH, there will be no follicle that is going to be developed and no oestrogen that is going to be secreted, right? Yes. Meaning that the secretion of the other hormone in this instance is going to impact or affect the secretion of the other hormone. Okay? Yes, that's how it goes. So, there will be less oestrogen that is going to be developed, right? So, it's secreted, right? Yes. So, um, the crystal level of, of, of oestrogen, as you can see, which is going to inhibit the pituitary gland again, not to secrete the what? The LH, the luteinizing hormone, to, to promote or advocate the, the ovulation process or the ovulation. Okay? Yes, there will be no egg that is going to be released. Meaning that that's why a pregnant female can't get pregnant again because there is no ovum that is being produced that is going to diffuse with the sperm. Okay? I hope you get it, guys. Okay? Yes. Meaning that there will be less LH, as I told you, leading to no ovulation process at all. Okay. So, I think I've explained everything effectively. Okay? Yeah. So, guys, one thing again, if ever you, you want more lesson contents or topics that you want me to d discuss in this channel, please try to comment, right? The lesson topics that you find complex to you or complicated to understand and so on that you wish me to, to, to produce in this channel, okay? Yes, because there are plenty of topics that I want to produce, but I don't know which is which I should produce, okay? Yes, that's how it goes, guys. So, meaning that increased levels of progesterone is going to inhibit the pituitary gland in secretion of, in the secretion of the FSH. If there is no FSH, no follicle that is going to be developed, less oestrogen, okay? Yes, after less oestrogen, meaning that there will be no LH, the luteinizing hormone, meaning that the, the, the pituitary gland is going to inhibit it because of that, there is no secretion to oestrogen or the follicle, meaning that it's not there, okay? Yes, that is going to lead to, to no ovulation processes at all. So. If ever I take it as vice versa, if ever I say, so sorry, if ever I say, for example, there is a decreased levels of progesterone, meaning that the corpus luteum has degenerated a shrink, okay? Yes. There will be high levels of FSH, meaning that the follicle is going to be developed at all, meaning that the menstrual cycle is starting over and over, okay? Yes. So, um, high progesterone levels, um, development of the follicle, becoming to or leading to becoming a graphene follicle, the well developed follicle that is going to secrete this oestrogen to to maintain the endometrium wall. After that, yeah, that's how it goes. Also, the, the, the levels of luteinizing hormone goes up. Okay, yes. If ever they go up, means that the, the, the follicle is now broken, it's now damaged, it became a graphene follicle. After becoming gra graphene follicle, it produces this, this oestrogen, I know, this progesterone, so sorry, this progesterone to maintain again and again. So it starts over and over, okay? Yes, I hope you get it, guys, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the fertilization, um, zygotes, blastosis, and implantation, right? Okay, so... In order for a female to get pregnant, or in order for a human being to get pregnant, which is a female, there must be, the one of the vital things that you have to understand here, guys, is the ovulation process must take place. Meaning that the production or the release of the egg must take place so that when a male sends their spermatozoa or their sex, um, their sex cells, into the female so that they can diffuse with the ovum that is being released right and form this process of fertilization right yes so that's how that's what it happens so i tried to make a drawing here um for a female reproductive organ just to make it clear that 
um, so bad in drawing, right? So sorry. Um, as you can see that these arrow-like, uh, let's assume uh, sperm, right? Yeah. So these are the male sex cells, meaning that these are the haploid male cells, okay? Yes, which has 23 number of chromosomes that are going up there, okay? And that in the vagina goes up after the cervix, going up straight to the fallopian tubes, but I didn't draw the other side of fallopian tubes, meaning that, um, yeah, but you have to understand that they go sideways, okay? Other sperm go that way, other sperm goes that way. So, meaning that they will go and go and go. Meaning that there, this is where we get our day 14, the release of the egg. The egg is being released. Um, this is maybe after two days after the release of the egg. Um, then, let's say the female was in intimates, then with the, with the male, um, the sperm was sent to fertilize the ovum. So they meet, so the haploid, um, the haploid male cell, okay, diffuse in the fallopian tubes with the ovum, meaning that with the haploid cell from the female, right? Yes. And diffuse, they diffuse, meaning that 23 number of chromosomes and twin, other 23 number of chromosomes. So they diffuse to form, to form this zygote. Okay, yes, this small dot line, like a zygote, okay, yes. So, after the zygote, meaning that the zygote is going to form, meaning that after maybe um, around 72 hours, meaning that it's going to take three days, okay, yes. The process of mitosis occurs in this, in this zygote, and form a small ball with not with main cells, with, with cells, okay? It means that the mitosis is going to, to divide this zygote into and, and develop this zygote to become the morula, yes. So, as it develops, it's still in the fallopian tubes, but move, moving towards the endometrium wall to be, to be implanted, right? As it moves again, the mitosis constantly occurs in this morula again. So, until it becomes um, a blastocyst, this hollow ball of many cells, okay, because of the, of the mitosis, right? Yes, so this hollow ball, which is known as the blastocyst, goes down towards the endometrium wall, okay? Goes down, again, goes down towards the endometrium wall, meaning that as it goes down uh, um, into the endometrium wall, it gets implanted there. And mind you guys, the blastocyst was formed after four days, okay, from zygote, okay? Yeah, the zygote, three days, it's a morula, then after one day, it's a, it's a blastocyst until it gets implanted into the endometrium wall. Yes, I wanted to make this video short as much as possible, guys. You can see time is ticking. Okay, so that's how it goes. So it's going to be implanted until this um, hollow ball, which is known as blastocyst, develops to become to become a to become a, a an, an embryo okay yes until the gestation period now we can say it's a fetus okay yes a fetus well developed baby you can see that um, they have organs that you can see clear okay yeah that's how it goes until um, the birth of the baby yes that's how it goes so guys I'm going to also touch on on the uh, on other lessons okay goodbye we are going to be doing a revision right yes so please don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to to comment on which lesson topics of lesson contents that you want me to produce right yes thank you so much guys take care cheers